Hey everybody, so I'm, I'm calling it, we're putting this thing to bed, um, we win, it's over, <laughs> the OGL 1.0a is safe, um, the, the, the SRD 5.1 is being released to the Creative Commons, it's like bulletproof, waterproof, I mean, you know, airtight, uh, I'm calling it like we win. This this is full of wins for us, for the players, for publishers, for for everybody all around, including um, Wizards of the Coast saving some serious face. Um, like this guy, Kyle Brink, um, he deserves a a promotion. Like seriously, like uh, whatever her name is, the the CEO that wanted to ram those microtransactions and recurrent spending into D D. she needs a swift kick in the ass and she needs to find her way to the door take her golden parachute with her and um i hope they i hope they do fire her uh she deserves it um so what does this what does this mean right first off like who knows what what it was like whether it was all the people going over in mass and canceling their D and D Beyond subscriptions, or which is my guess, um, or if it's the fact that fifteen thousand people um, replied to this survey like right away um, have uh, talked about the um, or, or have rep have done their exit interview thing. Uh, to the uh, OGL 1.2 and talked about how it will negatively affect their their business, their ability to publish, and whether they will actually go forward and keep publishing under the 1.2 in any way, shape, or form. So yeah, the the you know they say they say like they've listened to us, um, and the you know in in the last post from Kyle um, he gave us an apology and then in this post he's telling us that they're gonna leave the 1.0a alone so this guy like Kyle like he deserves a huge you know a huge pat on the back and a promotion for uh, saving a ton of face for uh, Wizards of the Coast and you know saving uh, a huge chunk of D&D's market share um, <clears throat> so, you know, in this survey, you're pretty much down the board, 90% of the people that replied to the survey they said that, uh, they're just not happy with the 1.2, um, 88% do not want to publish, um, content under the OGL 1.2, 90% would have to change some aspect of their business to accommodate the OGL 1.2, 89% are or dissatisfied with deauthorizing OGL 1.0a, 86% are dissatisfied with the virtual tabletop policy, and then 62% are satisfied with including system reference document content in the Creative Commons, and the majority of those who were dissatisfied asked for more SRD content in the Creative Commons. So, what happened, right? So they're saying that they're leaving the OGL 1.0a alone, and period. And you know, this is huge for anybody that has published content <clears throat> under the OGL 1.0a in the last 20 something years. Um, like, uh, it's, it's crazy just how many games there are. Like I was, I was looking at, uh, Green Ronin because the whole, like the age system was, uh, originally published like Dragon Age was where the age system came from back in like 3.5 and then it's branched out into you know fantasy age and like it's the expanse and like there's this all these games like and mutants and masterminds is based on 3.5 like there's too many games to even talk about here that are influenced or you know based on like the original ogl like srd right um so yeah they're leaving the original ogl 1.0a untouched alone leaving it in place and this is also huge for um video games like there's there's lots of video games that actually use the ogl um 
and the SRD and like uh, virtual tabletops too. Like um, you say that you want to use uh, something, you know, like roll, roll 20 or, or whatever that's not officially sanctioned by uh, a Wizards of the Coast to play D&D on or use some kind of app to on your phone, you know, or on your tablet or whatever to keep track of your characters uh, besides D&D Beyond, right? So they're, they're not clamping down on that IP with an iron fist, you know, and squeezing the, the pennies out of it, right? Um, the, uh, the, you know, this, this, this rising tide that has lifted all of these ships and the fact that the D&D did not become the heavyweight, like the, the, the biggest kid on the block with 50% of the market share by clamping down on their IP and, and squeezing the life out of it. They did it by opening it up to everybody and, you know, letting people publish content and just like, Kyle, like, you deserve a hand. So, yeah, um, <laughs> the, the, you know, this is going to have huge, huge ramifications, like, just across the board for everybody, like, um, what does it mean for players, uh, for, for players, if, if you, um, you know, if you, if you want to go out there and you, you know, you want to go on the DMs Guild and you want to download, like, uh, games like modules and, and campaigns and uh, monster manuals and all that stuff and, and use it in your your D, D game or you know if you're a fan of some other system that uses the OGL in some form like there's there's going it's, it opens it up so that so that there's just going to be so much more content for you know for people to play um like uh i would compare it to um this you know speaking of the uh the xbox ceo like i would compare it to having a season pass where you need to buy in and have those little recurring microtransactions and loot boxes and um you know like buying the special skin for your orc on the the the, the specific virtual tabletop of, of choice and um, some kind of open thing where there's like a thriving modding community and you can just do whatever you want with the game, right? So it's huge. That's what it means for players. For publishers, it's, it's, even, it's even bigger because um, so Say that you you wanted to go on to Drive Through RPG or the DMs Guild, and you wanted to publish some dinky little one shot for a buck or whatever, right? So it's you know it's going to take some time and some energy, and you might have like an illustration or something or something you know like some maps or something that you did for the game, and uh, it's it's a, a time investment and. Um, you might only see like a, a few bucks out of it or whatever. So imagine that you scale that up and you're doing like a Kickstarter or you have a publishing business. You have some kind of a, a, a publishing business where you've gone all in. It's your business and you have writers and illustrators and, and all kinds of people who depend on you for their job, you know, for their livelihood. And then you're just having the rug pulled out from under you um yeah it, it would be like um it would be like if uh to the tolkien family is said to said to D, D um you can't use elves and you can't use dwarves and you can't use orcs and you can't use goblins and you can't use um you know you you like all this stuff like uh balrogs and and like all that stuff that all belongs to us, and you you can't use it unless you pay us twenty five percent of your profits, right? Or like the the Catholic Church saying, "Yeah, you know how you're using dragons and unicorns and and angels and demons and um, 
and you know you're using all of that in your game no that's that's we own the license to that and and we're we're taking it away from you right so i mean there's there's all kinds of questions about whether it was legally enforceable to begin with and whether there was like a class action lawsuit or you know what was going to replace the the ogl and and how people were going to do that but in my in my opinion um first off this this srd 5.1 is like it's it's airtight and there's there isn't anything that they can do with it in the future to um to revoke it because it doesn't belong to them anymore it belongs to the creative commons now um which makes it for all for all intents and purposes the public domain um and it's and it's cool that they've they've added like they they put um uh races in it and then they put uh spells and they they've put all kinds of stuff in there that wasn't in it originally right because originally it was it was the rules like they were they stuff that they couldn't really copyright in the first place that was all part of the srd but now you know you've got things like um it's different uh you know classes and, and races and spells and all kinds of stuff like that um like that that's included in this srd so it's it's huge it's huge right um and uh on an interesting aside got i've got a couple things so um when uh when i originally did the original video talking about how uh we win and wizards of the coast surrenders um a lot of people were like no like we haven't we haven't won you know like they no nobody's won anything we won't win until wizards leaves the ogl alone and we get an apology i was like that's never gonna happen and that's never gonna happen but it happened both of them did um so you know like good good for us but also um i asked somebody uh or I asked him in one of my videos, I said, I said, if anybody has actually seen this, like, so-called hate content that was in the forefront of their, of Wizards of the Coast minds when they were redrafting the, you know, OGL, um, what is it? And one person actually found something. So it's kind of interesting um apparently back in um 2020 yeah 2021 um somebody actually tried to publish something under the um under the ogl uh so yeah let's see i start from the beginning so star frontiers was a um it looks like it was published originally published in 1982 and um it was by tsr and basically it was kind of a, a reskin of uh D, D. um like it looks like uh it was published again under d20 modern as a setting um d20 modern was back in like 3.5 um the, you know there used to be all kinds of games that you could play uh kind of like like green ronin is now where it's like you could do you could do D, &D or you could do like the like mutants and masterminds or um they had like there was like a spy game it's, i think that that's actually still out like it still exists spy craft and you know if you wanted to play a superhero game you could do that if you wanted to play a sci-fi game then you could play like alternity or like d20 modern was like the modern equivalent of 3.5 where they had skills like driving or what have you right so um <clears throat> uh yeah so like back in like 2004 it was published as a setting and then um in 2021 
um, <clears throat> uh, the a new iteration of TSR Games was launched by a group including Ernie Gygax, son of the deceased um, Gary Gygax, you know, and um, Justin Lanassa. So it looks like Justin Lanassa was uh, um, maybe one of the co-founders. So they announced uh, plans to release games under the uh, Dungeon Hobby Museum, Hobby Shop Museum, which is located in the original TSR office building. And um, so apparently the, uh, the game contained some blatantly racist, uh, Nazi eugenics, homophobic, transphobic, transphobic and anti-semitic content so i was i was under the impression that everything that was happening like the, the all there was all just gaslighting that there was no hate content that didn't exist um that and you know i said i said if anybody's seen it let me know because i want to i want to i want to find it i want to see if it actually exists and um so apparently the game contained um if you if you play or in the play test the uh if you played a black race then it was classified as a sub race having average intellect with a maximum intelligence rating of nine whereas the norse race has a minimum intelligence rating of 13. so yeah it sounds like pretty blatantly like kind of uh Nazi eugenics uh, racist uh, so it did actually exist and then in uh, 2022 Watsi sued them um, they did not revoke their OGL 1.0 a which you know like there is a, there there was a clause in there where they could just revoke it based on like hate content or whatever um, they sued them because of the TSR trademark that um, they uh, they said that it that it um, negatively uh, it negatively sort of impacted their brand because people associated the trademarks uh, TSR the original TSR with Wizards of the Coast and Dungeons of the Dragons so they uh, and then they admitted that they did not file paperwork for the registration of TSR, Star Frontiers, and other related trademarks in a timely fashion. It's required by law. But um, they, uh, they, they sued them instead. So, yeah, I mean, interesting, right? And then, um, so, the other thing is that uh, apparently, like, Hasbro which is like another I think that this pressure was coming from the top and then that's why they uh, that's why there's this big push to over to to monetize d d to get more money out of it um, apparently uh, Hasbro is not doing so well like uh, if you didn't know um, uh, Hasbro has an entertainment division called E1 um, <clears throat> which, of course, is going to include Dungeons and Dragons, but also like My Little Pony and, you know, Transformers and Power Rangers and uh, got some some you know some different shows. It looks like they they did the uh, the Woman King and, um, but you you get the idea, right? So they um said that they're going to double down and really focus on Dungeons and Dragons like making TV shows and you know films and and all that and uh, because uh, they <laughs> the, the, the like the My Little Pony and um, the uh, you know like what do you call it um, Transformers and, and and all that just not doing so great <laughs> So, so you know, I, I have I have a little hot take on this, that 
every time that they do a D and D movie, like there has not been a good one. There's some ones that are like comically bad, you know, like so bad that they're good. There's like well maybe like one good one, like the one with Jeremy Irons was was okay, but it's like every time that they do a D and D movie, they just like self immolate, like they pour the gas on themselves and light them. It's just a cyclical thing. It's like a phoenix, you know, rising from the ashes. They just need to burn all the dead flesh off. But anyways, that's my <laughs> that's my hot take on all this. And um, hopefully we just put this thing to bed. We move on. And everybody is happy and people, everybody saves face. So some of those smaller uh, publishers get some sunlight on their games. Because there's so many great games out there that aren't D and D, uh, and D and D gets to keep some of their market share and save a little bit of face, and we can uh, we can go out and see the new Dungeons and Dragons movie without feeling like we need to boycott it or whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my take on it. And personally, I think that there's tons of wins here. It's it's good and just across the board. So take care of yourselves. I hope this is some good news for you. I hope it brings a smile to your face and I will see you in the next one.